Welcome back. This is week number four of the European qualifier for the Quake World Championships, the Dual Cup. And we've just had a really, really good series where Evil has moved on into our Sunday playoffs with very, very dominant fashion. But we are late on in the tournament at this stage. Every match that we are about to see from this point on, including the one we just saw, was to determine who makes it into our Sunday playoffs. And the match up next is going to be Syndrome versus Pavel. Now, Syndrome did play last week in week number three. He lost to Smoke, who has moved on into the regionals in week number three. And Pavel in particular, I believe last week lost to Hal as well. And Hal himself is still in the tournament too. So I think there might be uh, the potential for a run back there, maybe in the playoffs, but we'll have to wait and see how the uh, the bracket deems it to be. But either way, there's scope for returning faces and people to, I guess, redeem themselves after weeks of not qualifying. So this is going to be another situation of two players that have repeatedly entered and repeatedly have unfortunately not been able to make top 16 and been able to play in the, or if they have made top 16, not quite able to, to, to cross that final hurdle to making regionals. So this could be another situation if one of them is guaranteed to make top 16 again, where they get a second shot at qualifying, and another one is unfortunately going to just have to stay at home. So this tournament to sort of series, I suppose, their journey through the Quick World Championships is going to end today. Well, the map we're always going to be playing on is Blood Covenant. So yep. that's going to be, from this point on, this will be the first map all the time. It's the predetermined map for this round of the tournament. Indeed. So the rest of the series we're going to be seeing today, we actually don't have that many left to go. We have like a, a, a couple left to a show off. Yeah, a small handful left to go with. Um, but because they will all be in the same round of the tournament, we're not going to go advanced past the top 16 of the week. This round is the furthest we're going to be going. So Blood Covenant is always going to be the first map, which means this is... You'd, you'd think one of the more familiar maps for all the players, considering. I think we're going to see a lot of champions that we've been seeing all night. So we're going to see Nyx, we're going to see Ranger, we're going to see Anarchy, because they're all so popular on Blood Covenant. They're popular anyway, but on Blood Covenant, they almost, in some amounts, maybe if, if not all together in some amounts, they seem core cool because they can move around as well as they can. They can rotate and get those objectives quicker than most. And it's easy to sort of play a defensive game as well. But to be honest, Blood Covenant, it can be a little bit open for who we see. Haven't seen any Slash tonight. I know in week two in particular, that really seemed to be a little bit of like the week of Slash. We saw her picked a ton and it was really fun to watch. But so far in this stream, not really much, but I guess that can always come down to we just haven't seen people that use Slash on stream or they've already qualified. But the variety hasn't been as plentiful tonight. People have gone with much safer traditional picks. I think people are going with stuff that they they just feel a bit more confident with, right? Because yeah. this is the this last is the time. This is their last time to, to show what they can do. And going into this draft phase, first things first syndrome with that saw lag and Pavel going in. Oh, oh you were saying. Devil. We have oh, Slash. You, you see the top left. Oh, that, you see that, is a, that is a very peculiar team composition. Galena and Slash on the same team, and Anarchy. And on Blood Covenant, of all maps too. Um, excuse me, my voice is terrible, I understand. He's <laughs> ill, It's been getting progressively worse and worse through the night, and I'm, I'm doing my best. But uh, I think <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to succumb to the voice eventually. But regardless, Galena on Blood Covenant, of all the maps. We don't tend to see this too much at all. Um, slash, again, even as, like, <laughs> it's quite appropriate that right as you're talking about the lack of Slash we've seen uh, so far, we see it for the first time. However, Slash picked into Sawlag and Clutch and Blaskovitz, I think um, from the side of, I believe it was Pavel, no, Syndrome. Syndrome picked the uh, uh, Sawlag, Blaskovitz and Clutch. That is an aggressive composition. That's a corrupted keep loadout. That, 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 that is three champions built to just annihilate. They are built to fight, they are built to be annoying, they are built to not let you fight back. They get in your face, they cover you in acid, they dual wield and delete you, or they just pop a barrier and all of a sudden you're not allowed to fight back. That is an aggressive bully team comp that if he can get that going early, is going to be terrifying to deal with. Well, Slash will have the element of being able to make a lot of the jumps that everyone else can. She can go for the crouch side. If she builds up enough speed, she can make the same amount of jumps that all the other Agile champions can. But she's going to have the benefit of having just a little bit more health and armor than they do. She's a little bit more tanky than the Anarchy, than the Nyx, without the compromise of the speed, because she is, in many ways, as fast as them. And in some ways, depending on the map, can be a little bit faster, depending on how many twists and turns that she can take. But I'm excited Indeed. to see what happens. I just Slash is one of those champions again that you don't get to see her often, but when you do, oh my god, it's a treat. Oh yeah. If they are good at the mobility and if, if, if any of you guys are watching at home that haven't seen what Slash can do at a high Slash. level, I hope we're about to see uh, Pavel put that to good use. Because when you see Slash moving around, they've got the crouch slides on deck and they have the momentum and they've got all the circuits going. Um, it is just... If you like watching Quake movement, it 
rarely gets better than Slash. So with Anarchy and Galena, I mean, we haven't even talked about the potential of Galena on Blood Covenant. In some ways, Galena is not as effective on Blood Covenant. Because... I also think there's very there's very little we can say about Anarchy that hasn't already been said a hundred oh, times. Oh yeah, I mean, he's we've, just, we've seen it. He's just a good champion, and there's it's very obvious as to why mobility, survivability. Um, just versatility and play styles. You can be aggressive, very good at playing the runaway game and sort of the, you know, playing for the clock and stalling the timeout. And then you've got Galena, who we see little of, but when we do see, has a very unique role she brings to the but team. But we almost never see her picked on Blood Covenant. And yeah. we, we touched on this very briefly earlier, but it's the fact that to be effective on this map, you need to be able to really be able to go wherever you want whenever you want, and that comes in the form of an ability that gives you a speed boost that can get you from point A to point B, or a passive that just gives you some kind of movement that allows you to make maybe double jumps or bigger jumps around or whatever that just helps you navigate. She hasn't really got any of those. She's, she lives and dies by those totems. So when we see Galena picked, I think it's more going to be um, not to sort of, if it is going to be to sort of sit and control the high ground, it's going to be done a little bit differently. She's not going to be able to navigate the same way. So I'm just really interested to see how Pavel is able to make this team composition work. It's not one that you see often. And actually, no, they went for a uh, different pick. So forget we said anything. They have actually gone back and changed their champions to, well, this. That's actually really disappointing. <laughs> like, thoroughly disappointing. Oh well. I mean, regardless, you know these champions are still good. Oh yeah, of course. And also, you know, champions we've seen a ton of already. Today oh, so ready for slash. Oh well. Unfortunately, it's not meant to be for now. How we just got to forget syndrome. Uh, lost, just narrowly lost a ghost last week, so Syndrome has managed to get it through to top 16 already. Looking to do the same thing today, and Pavel didn't quite get as close, but there we go. A lot of damage coming oh. out. Of there we go. Plenty of life left on the side of Syndrome too. A comfortable first frag. Let's be honest though, we just got wrecked. Big time. Yeah, a bit. Now. I mean, a lot. Quite a lot. <laughs> Thoroughly. So. As you can see here, losing the Nyx really early on um, is normally, it really is a deal breaker on Blood Covenant. But he's going in for the chase. Syndrome getting that last minute rail as well. He's looking super dominant. Pavel down to his final this champion. Is, this is what Anarchy can do if he gets that ball rolling and can just get aggression immediately. Look at this, a minute in and two frags already on the table. I mean, there are very different styles of Anarchy we tend to see. You can see it's all, almost like a very patient. That was really aggressive and it's going to be against a visor with no rail. So I think that's why in some ways he went so aggressive because if he's confident he can dodge those rockets, he's not going to get instantly tagged by that rail. Keeping the rail away from visors is going to be very important too because in that piercing sight, he really sort of thrives on the rail gun when he's got that wall hack on deck. Oh, wow. Narrowly missing that one, though. Oh, Taking the next. shots, but... This has mega health. Got back to back. That's yeah. the mega health almost completely nullified. That was the charged version too, so we've got an extra bonus 10 HP. Oh, oh my lord, Syndrome just putting on a masterclass of aiming with rail and rocket today. Already round one complete in swift fashion. That could potentially be foreshadowing. That was confident, it was accurate, it was calculated. And that's round one, super quick. Indeed. Going into the next round now, do we see the same thing? Pavel once again starting with Nyx. Syndrome on this anarchy, no reason to change. Now Pavel lost his Nyx really early last time. You go for a certain champion first and you lose it in record time. It can be, in some ways, it can be quite a large knock at your confidence. Although it does look like where Syndrome opted to go towards the rail at the start. Pavel got himself the rockets. So I've got a few weapons each right now. Well, if he went towards the heavy armor location, it's there's a good chance that he did manage to take the rail. And he has managed to get it. Uh, Anarchy's in trouble. He's going to yeah, have exactly. to get that armor. I'm just going to save him. But Pavel playing a lot better this time. Anarchy Syndrome's already able to stock himself once again to max of both. Ooh. Come on, Captain, Captain, yeah. Captain it. waiting for it. I think he was able to pick it up just before too, so Pavel to get away. Hasn't done a huge amount for Nyx though, it is steadily going down too. The longer she's out of action, the less useful that heavy armor's gonna be. Oh, that was unfortunate. That could have been a guaranteed amount of damage. Unfortunately, just off the mark. Syndrome, the accuracy we saw in round one, not quite translating over to this one just yet. Unless he just didn't expect uh, Pavel to be there. Maybe it just took him by surprise. Yeah, some of the rails aren't really as confident. They're more just kind of in the general direction. If you're there and I see you, I'll shoot. Why not? If I get you, great. Minimal damage.
Much more of a slower exchange in this round. I think Pavel just realizes how quickly Syndrome can delete all of his champions, to be honest. There's the chase. Oh, tries to wait for him. There's the injection to keep himself alive. This is something that Anarchy can do very well. As soon as the fight isn't going his way, he can pop that injection and just run away as far as possible. Syndrome wasn't really interested, but at this point, Pavel was just waiting for him. There's the rail, but it misses. Six damage on the rocket. That's not going to be enough to really sort of keep him at bay. There's Nyx using that wall jump to sort of stop halfway up. Once again, though, gone back to this neutral situation. Would have seen that rocket, so no doubt he knows the mega health's been collected. Oh, and so missed. slightly missing. I actually can't believe Another. that missed. Oh, connects the third, though. Pavel is in trouble. Can't afford to take a single extra hit. There's the ghost walk, and he's going to take it for free when she's invisible. She's not able to pick up any pickups, so that's going to be a free take there for Syndrome. And he definitely knew it, too. Pavel desperately going to need to pick up some armor at the moment, though. We've already talked on just to, 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 to no length about how dangerous it can be to have no armor as Anarchy and Nyx when the rail is so prominent. Oh, speaking of which, took a shot. Didn't quite connect. Looking to take that fight towards heavy armor once more. And Pavel realizing it's it's way too risky for him to try and take it. Not even trying to check him with that rail as he runs. Just getting out of there as fast as possible. always expected him to be in the ghost walk mode, though, because he kind of shot a defensive rocket at the floor as it spawned. Oh, there they are. Uh -oh. Point blank. And there's the injection. Making that sweet sequence. Oh, missed the rail. That could have been disastrous. We are seeing a lot of missed rails in this round in particular. Way more than we saw in the first bit. Doesn't matter. And the pressure just became big. Pavel, because I mean, look at the clock. One minute, 20 seconds. And we've said a thing or two about how well Anarchy can really run away and play that timer. And it is a Ranger too, so he does have mobility options. But a lot of it comes down to the Dire Orb, which we can see is already used. He has to get the rail, but uncontested. Syndrome doesn't even want to try and challenge that. I think he's comfortable having that champion lead. That's one. He has to land an extra one, especially now the injection's been popped. There we go! He gets it! Now it's 2-2. Two, two. This is going to be a very crucial decision, though, for Syndrome, as he knows this is likely going to be his last champion in the round. He's gone for Nyx. We're going to go down to overtime in 45 seconds. Unless we see a random fight breaking out right now, this is probably going to be the final matchup for the round in Nyx and Ranger. As when we go into overtime, it's going to be the next frag wins. I don't think we're going to be seeing something happen in the next 30 seconds unless we're likely to be it in, just comes out of nowhere. We're likely to be in the next frag win scenario regardless. I think if someone gets a frag here, they're going to play defensive for the remainder of the time. And if that doesn't happen, and we go into sudden death, it's going to be next frag wins anyway. So we'll see who gets it first. Minimal damage on the rocket jump. That ever so prominent bonus that Ranger has, especially on a map like this where rocket jumps are such a common form of getting up and down. Fully decked out Pavel though. Both health and armor completely dominated. And now we go into overtime. Ghost Walk pop two. If Syndrome gets caught out, this could be dangerous. Another missed rail on the side of Pavel. Gets the Mega Health, but gets hit by another one. That's all of his armor has disappeared. It was a really brave Ghost Walk at the very end, just to uh, say a safe Ghost Walk, I should say, where eliminate the risk of even getting caught off guard. Well, you can see him. All oh, that rail doesn't quite connect. Pavel is really living and dying by these rails when they're on point. He's a dangerous threat, and when not, he takes a ton of damage in return. Kind of funny, really. Syndrome landed so many of those rails on Pavel, but he was so heavily stacked. It just didn't matter. He hit three rails. And the second he got hit by one, he was the one that had to run away. That is how different these health and armor balls can be in Quake Champions. Mega health once again goes the way of Pavel. Oh. There we go. There's that ghost wall. Probably just does not want to get hit by a direct. There's the heavy armor too. Oh, we can see Pavel below. Nice, quick, snappy rail. Pavel is losing his health one bit at a time. Another, Another one. one! Wow! He just needs an extra hit at this point. We'll see if he can get it. Predictive rocket. Only gets four damage. And there it is once more! Really well played. And at the last minute, finally manages to chip down that health to the point where he could secure it with a rail. Dangerous accuracy too. It seems to be that when it really, really boils down to it, that's where he's going for these rails. Well, this stage, he only needs one more, and that's going to be a good start for Syndrome. 
I mentioned he did fall to smoke last week. Well, it's almost was... like not as important to miss the rails when you know it's all down to, um, like, it's not as much of a deal breaker, but when it's, like, crucial and it's literally, like, make or break, you hit the rail and you win the game. If not, you lose. We see Syndrome hitting the majority of them in that situation. When they really matter. Which means he's got a good clutch factor, if anything. Which also means that making a comeback against him will be quite difficult. Uh, Danaki. Danaki's he's not going to be too aggressive, though. Doesn't really want to get met down there, especially when there's a rocket in hand. Yeah, you see, he's just trying to keep him off that mega health as best he can. And immediately, I think because he saw he was there. So I'm just completely content taking the heavy armor instead. In some ways, heavy armor will be better because you, you can afford to take a bit more rails. This is what happens when you have two lightweight champions both trade a rail. They both try and sort of disengage as fast as physically possible. Oh! That one just zipped past. Pavel only on four rockets, though. So he's going to have to be really careful. Only has a couple more to establish range. I mean, he can quite quickly go towards the rocket right now. We can see Syndrome starting to go there now. I'm not quite sure if Paz was going to get there in time. Oh, dear. Oh, two of them. Can't afford to take any more. Even with that injection. Still under 80. There's the chase. Pavel catches him. But this gives him a little bit of a boost of speed. So it's going to allow him to run away. Oh, that 100 damage! Wow, 100. Oh, oh, and there's the follow-up. No way Syndrome's going to be missing that one, considering just how many amazing rails he's been hitting so far. So, I mean, that basically is seen as, like, the, the, the easy one, right? When you get someone with a rail off a jump pad. That's, like, the standard. Oh, and he catches the uh, Dire Orb, so there's not really anything he can do to escape. And that was all he needed. That was a good spawn as well. We Pavel was looking pretty chunky on health and armor, but because he used his Dire Orb to try and secure rail and Syndrome was ready, it was just so much guaranteed damage. Now, Syndrome only has one rocket left. He's going to have to use it wisely, unless right now, looking likely that this is going to be his next course of action, just to regenerate some of that ammo. And he's caught him off the jump pad. Wow. Nothing Pavel could do to stop that one. You get caught on a jump pad versus lightning gun, and you are dead. Very strong, very stable. That's what we expect to see, and that's what we got. Already, Syndrome looking one map away from qualifying for Sunday's playoffs once again. You can tell he's hungry to get back to, at the very least, the same position he got last time. That's going to be a good starting point for some of these guys. If, if you get top 16 and then you go down, your next call of, to, uh, sorry, call of action needs to be right. I need to play minimum exactly the same. Because when you're going to progress as a player, especially in something like a world championship such as this, you need to make sure you're always improving. If you place a certain way one week, the next week, you've got to outplace yourself. Doesn't matter how it is. Doesn't matter whether it's top 16, top eight, top four, top two. As long as you have that clear visible progression, right? Yeah. That you just can't deny. You can see, you know, go by your weekly results and go, okay, right, I am getting gradually better and better. This is where I struggle, so this is where I need to focus on. And we are gradually starting to see that. However, ultimately, it all comes down to the competition. Even though we do tend to see the stronger games later on in the tournament, that doesn't mean there aren't just like heavy hitters versus heavy hitters earlier on, just by the way the brackets go week after week. And as we get closer and closer, these guys have to show to themselves that they are worth getting to those sort of final playoff situations, because this is just for making playoffs on Sunday. This isn't even for making it to regionals. This is just to get into Sunday's games. This is the first step for these guys. Exactly. And with, with this much on the line, Line, it's something that you have to concentrate on. Take it one match at a time and take it one stage at a time. Don't be thinking about regionals right now. Be thinking about just the playoffs. Think about regionals once you've made regionals. You know, you can't let two... Sometimes I think players might be able to... They think a bit too far ahead and it can almost... There's so much going on because you're thinking of all these different stages you have to make that in some ways, no matter what the game is, it can distract you from what is right there in front of you, which in this case is one more map, potentially. So we already can see Syndrome is very competent on that railgun. And that's a quite a, I don't want to say generic map, but that is almost like the default map for Dual Right. I was about to say, it kind of seems like a sort of default map. So when you've got the you've got the options of Corrupted Keep, Blood Run, Ruins of Sarnath, there's but, three massively different maps. But let's say your opponent is Syndrome and he is a surgeon with the railgun at the moment. He is just in, he is in the zone and he is hitting the majority of those shots. Do you go to, and he's already playing quite a squishy composition. Do you go Corrupted Keep to not give him as many sort of uh, uh, not give him as much space to run away, but also the main thing is to take that rail away from him. We've seen that quite often, where if a player is prominently very skilled with the rail gun, then the immediate answer is to just remove that from play. But on the flip side of that, if the player who well, is really yeah. good with the rail gun can play multiple champions, 
they can pick a magical composition to get around Corrupted Keep. It also doesn't mean it's quite as clear of an answer as that, because I remember that happened to, as far as where that happened to Toxic in week one, who is renowned for his railgun accuracy, I think it's fair to say, um, had a ridiculously good first map, was taken to Corrupted Keep where there was no rail, he still won. We saw it just before with Evil, who was ridiculous with the railgun, went to Corrupted Keep to take it away from him and still won convincingly. So I don't think it's quite as as much of a counter as that. But regardless, you know, just taking that threat away, I mean, if you're confident in your rocket, as not as much as your rail, then the Corrupted Keep is a good pick for that. Especially when we saw that Syndrome just doesn't run those big body champions that make Corrupted Keep such, or have the potential to make it such a dangerous map. Well, I guess only time will tell. We're moments away from getting our second map underway, and this could potentially be it for Pavel. I mean, he lost three straight rounds, and he's on the back foot at this stage. The map he picks now, is the deciding factor for him. Is he going to go out 2-0, or is he going to make it 2-1, and is the map going to be the one that benefits him? Ah, so it's going to be Blood Run. Run. Okay, back to the tried and true, I think. Syndrome what do you reckon, in that Slash, mix. Galena? <laughs> I mean, that's the question, right? Is this even going to be the real draft? Oh, it's Galena! I mean, is this real? I don't know. I'm sure. Galena on this map is very popular. Yeah, but you know, fool me once. Shame on, on you. Fool me twice. No, Nyx. I mean... Fool me twice, they pick Nyx. I mean, I'm, I'm inclined to think it's real. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, it's, it's Galena, Galena on Blood Run is 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 totally totally. Yeah, but yeah, but fool me once. <laughs> you're never gonna, you're never you. gonna get over that, are you? I mean, you know, I guess I shouldn't take it personally, but I can't, can't help it. <laughs> so Galena on Blood Run is actually a very common tactic. I think it's because there's lots of little twists and turns, lots of corners, and close cause areas that she can be a real nuisance on. But a big factor is going to be how useful teleporters I'd say this, are. this is probably her most successful map in Duel. Yeah. So I think that's fair to say. It's probably this and Ruins, and this probably inches ahead of Ruins, just because we see here more on this. I think it's because tele teleporters are a key element of mobility on this. So it's not just going to be an element of trying to get that free damage when you put the totems down on the entry point of a teleporter, but knowing that in the higher level scenario, your opponent is going to know that a totem is likely to be in front of a teleporter, so they don't use the teleporters at all. That means that their ability to navigate the map just got cut in half because they haven't got that quick access that the teleporters give them. And he's going Galena first. I think this is going to be really useful for an early start. Get hold of that rail. Try and Ooh, take it first. Try but... to hit him on the way to Mega Health was not was quite on the mark. That's one rail. Is he going to land another? No, not quite. But let's land one already. So immediately, the totem goes down. I think that's going to be, in some ways, to deny the rocket launcher or make it a little bit more of a pain to take. Another element to those totems is you can see... You can see when a totem is destroyed, which means that if you're not quite sure where your opponent is and then your totem goes down, you know where the opponent is likely to be at because they just took the totem out. Tried something to the rail, but didn't quite connect in time. Gonna be a while before we potentially see the next fight because of the uh Ooh, that pickup crucial rail. Predictively waiting. He's not wanting to use the totem yet. I think he's trying to save it for when the he's exchange. It for the fight, yeah. Yeah, I think he's saving it for the fight. Because it does activate almost instantly. Now the mega health goes down, he trades it out for heavy armor, gets there more than quick enough. I mean if he puts a totem on the ground and anarchy steps into it, that is 75 damage against an anarchy and doesn't even need it! Really good start. And now Nyx on spawn. If she stands on it, she's dead. Looks like he's not quite ready yet, though. Is it quite in position? Do you think she's she being the forced to run though? away? I mean, let's hope that she doesn't run into the... Uh... There we go. Oh, no. Spotted it before. Almost ran into it. But there we go. Syndrome paying attention. But he now knows that she's going to be up there. That's an important thing, right? Even seeing that your opponent is playing Galena means you have to exercise more caution than you might be used to. Well, Syndra playing as patient as he needs to, I think. We, we actually very geniusly saw a similar play when it was Zoot versus ZSX on Ruins of Sarnath, where ZSX had placed a totem down. Zoot was just about to stand on it or destroy it, and he decided not to. He stayed right next to it and waited for ZSX to return because he, was, he must have thought, right, he hasn't destroyed it. He can't possibly be there. He used the totem against him, and it actually benefited him. Right, that's almost like that counterplay using their champion against them in certain situations, but that's not something we see sort of every day. Almost that sort of in-depth matchup knowledge, but we are starting to see that a little bit more the longer this game goes on. Nice little rail there for Pavel. I actually think the, the important thing here is though Syndrome has already lost that Anarchy, and that Anarchy was such a deal-breaker going into this. 
and already having it off the cards is a good thing for Pavel, for sure. Catches a good read outside of the ghost walk in. This whole round is just looking so much better for Pavel. Oh wow, Court Ranger on spawn two syndrome. He's gonna have a rocket launcher, but I don't think he's got anything else yet. He's gonna head him off. Misses the rocket, but that's okay. Going in for the totems. The Dire Orb actually manages to take out the totem. They trade ability for ability. And he loses Galena. Ranger mirror, but look at how weak. Already going through though, Pavel looking a little bit closer to tying things up. We've seen Ranger make hella comebacks today as is, but we have to see him do it again just to start things off. But Pavel, this is the kind of stuff he needs for sure. Oh, Ooh, it's a rail damage. for below. Wow, yeah. Clean. That said, Ranger and Nyx, both unbelievably popular on Blood Run and the amount of damage that was done with Pavel before he even needed those two champions. I mean, that was all Galena at this point. Syndrome trading out shot for shot. Pavel starting to miss these now. Oh, they trade Dire Orb for Dire Orb! The fight was almost nuts. That was so close from having a mid-air that probably would have taken him yeah, out. Pavel, Pavel was the one to pick up the armor though, so he's gonna be in, in the lead right now at the very least. But Syndrome. One on one. Rail. Yeah, Pavel's in a it's bad closer spot. And closer. There's that die orb through the grate. He's gonna bag it. Pavel just needs to survive for one minute. On this map, though, it can be easier said than done because, I mean, it's so close quarters. You are inevitably gonna bump into the opponent in a minute's time. They meet head on, both with the LG. And they're going for the chase. Syndrome, I mean, he has no other option. He has to chase this down, and he does manage to do it! Wow. Well, yeah, oh, what a spawn! Oh, my lord. Is he going to get in? The ghost walk is popped. Does he get aggressive here? Does he try and chase him down? This could be a good situation for Syndrome. That was an amazing spawn. I don't think he knows that Nyx is there. He definitely didn't know he was there, and he still cannot see him. He's trying to heal himself up though, Syndrome now, after being down for most of the round, is starting to even things out and has a little bit of a lead right now in health and armor. We're gonna go down to sudden death, but really isn't gonna matter when they've got one each left. We are getting closer and closer. Oh, what's caught him? There we go, the ghost walk is out. If he can make a read on where she's gone. Okay, he sees her. He's going in, he's going for the chase. But he's so stacked, he can use the rocket jumps really as often as he likes. He meets him on, here we go. Oh, 15 Very health. Very nearly died in the process. That's why you have to be careful going into the chase. Oh, oh no. no! Oh, thank goodness Pavel was not there waiting for that. I don't think he expected an, an error of that magnitude. Let me see the heavy armor's up. Oh, no, he fumbles it, and it allows Pavel to collect a free heavy armor. But it doesn't matter, he gets it anyway. What a recovery. That was actually almost a disaster for Syndrome. Like, oh, twice he tried to go for the heavy armor, and unfortunately he fumbled it back to back. But somehow Pavel just didn't recognize that it happened and wasn't able to punish him for it. Well, I mean, that, that went from bad to worse. But somehow, after such an amazing start to the round, we, we see Pavel go down around. I really was thinking that was going to be his. But another rail going into the instant heal of the totem, and that is actually going to give him the lifeline that he needs. Galena's defensive totems at a rail clutch at the last minute. And it was all because Galena had that self heal from the totem, something that basically no one else in the game can I do. Mean, Galena being quite an unorthodox champion, but definitely has her place. Oh, oh my lord, Pavel with the shots. He's woken up, man. He's ready for it now. His Galena is looking superb. I think he's realized night. just just quite what's basically on the line, right? You know, if there's a time you have to sort of bring up what you can, now is the time. That and, was oh my just, God. Oh I mean, my God. Less than, less than 50 seconds that round was. Oh, but that is great. Champions, you know, you can go to five minutes, you can go to five minutes and beyond. You, you can go, go to 50 down, seconds. Or you can go to less than a minute. That truly is how the game can go. It's all about just being careful. And it came down to the, also the self-sustain that Galena has access to. He was looking really weak. He couldn't have tanked another rail, but gives himself the health that he needed to survive the next amount of damage that he took. And because of it, he out-survived Syndrome. Oh, oh airborne. Wow, Pavel with that read. Just sat there waiting for Syndrome. Quite a generous cooldown, too. In 20 seconds, he's going to have another totem ready to go. And he would have just seen the totem went taken down, so he's going to know that he's nearby. Rail missing is 
super important for Pavel that now he's answered back with not only a rocket but a rail of his own. Going into that rocket jump, he knows he has that totem, so he has that health burst if he needs it. He can also double up. There's the uh, ghost walk sitting within his own, and that's it, sit within your own totem. If she's going to try and assassinate you point blank, she's going to die in the process and they trade. But that was a great trade for Pavel, to be honest. It's now two versus one. If you get a trade... But that is Galena off the cards, though. That's definitely been Pavel's kind of like shining star champion at the moment. It's kind of crazy, really, how we have Ranger and Nyx on Blood Run, but it's Galena that's been the unsung hero of this team comp so far. Syndrome, though, what do you see to make these comebacks with good shooting? He's going to bag that rail again, so he's getting closer and closer. Mega health is not up for a while. Looking quite weak, though. Well, fairly even at this stage. Not going to be a problem anymore. There's that patience. Waiting for the mega health, but Pavel lying in wait. Four Look at how weak though. they both are. He has to go in for the die roll, but no! Wasn't ready to capitalize, and the missile on the rocket as well! Did you see that railgun? Pavel took a shot and he had no armor. If that connected, the round would have been Pavel's already. Let's hope he doesn't live to regret that one. He might. That might be the that might be the miss that sends him out of the tournament. If uh -oh. he brings it all the way back, which he's looking like he might do. And Pavel not chasing it down. He doesn't want to overextend. He's already given up one frag. He doesn't want to give up a second. Just getting some of the health regen, though, thanks to the blood pool. Don't seem to say, see people using this too often. Oh. Well, even though he's kind of undone the damage, the important thing is that Pavel wasn't able to take it. only just gone halfway through this round. This is how quick the turnaround has been on this map in particular. It's definitely a map that Pavel needs to win. This was his choice. Apple Fiper missed rails once again. Not opting to teleport towards the die roll, but again, that next level read of just baiting them into looking towards it gives you enough time to just get out of there. Oh, that rocket would have been important to land, but doesn't for the rail instead. I have no doubt Pavel's going to have his ghost walk now, so... Indeed, but you know, considering how quickly this damage is ending up, he's got to make sure that his reactions are on point when he realizes how much damage he's taking. You see Pavel's trying to hold on to this mega health. He's coming in for it. Doesn't want to push too hard, though, I don't think, because if you get caught in a bad situation point blank against a ranger with a rocket, you're going to board... it aggressively. They're both going in. The die roll, though, doesn't land any damage, but Syndrome took so much in the process. He is nice and close towards... Well, that was actually three individual health pickups. And a good catch on the teleporter! Really well played. Let's not forget that round actually started off amazingly well for Pavel. That was a bit of a comeback coming out from Syndrome. And already now match point after what was such a good start for Pavel. Syndrome is now one round away from taking himself to Sunday's playoffs. I think it's coming down to just good composure. Really impressive composure. It also just doesn't seem to be that... Like, Pavel has clearly invested heavily into this Galena, but ultimately, the other ones of his champions just aren't quite able to hold up the same amount of weight that his Galena is. Whereas Syndrome, like all three of his champions that we've seen across you know, the last oh. one and this. But again, sustainability because of the totems. He had so much extra health because of it. And because she's got 100 health and 75 armor, unlike the other champions, they get hit by a rail at the beginning and can't really survive. She's a bit chunkier. You know, she can stay in those fights a little bit longer in comparison to the, look, the fact that she's also got a totem there too. And if she needs it, she has that instant burst heal. And he... Oh, no! Uh, so... I'm pretty I, sure he walked into that at the same time. I'm pretty sure that was a combo. That was a combo of both rocket launcher and totem. And here comes another one, forcing him to really change his direction towards the totem and get out of play. But is it enough? He's got 38 health. But staying in the blood pool to get a little bit back. And then go back to 100. No worries, and Pavel immediately taking it down to one more champion again. It's Galena doing so much work. Is Syndrome going to make a, make a comeback again? I don't know if he can even survive at this rate. There's the die orb towards Heavy, but it doesn't matter. Three straight champions with Galena. This champion has been putting in so much work right now. 
It is, and for good reason. We see it on Blood Run often, but rarely used to this effect. Right now, Pavel is just putting on a bit of a masterclass on how to use Galena and Duel and Syndrome. You know, it's looking good for him so far, but he needs to hold it together. He was looking so confident in map number one, but the closer this gets from slipping away to him, the more strong Pavel looks instead. Well, it was a great start from Pavel that was taken away by Syndrome, but that last round and the one before it was a great start that continued all the way through. The issue is, is Syndrome going to be able to snuff that momentum for a third round and there it is that denial of the teleporter the second syndrome steps a foot in that teleporter he's gonna take damage all behind core point blank expecting him to run away there's the totem it's gone gets the mega health lightning gun starting to add up gets hit by a quick rail it's gonna undo all of that health he just picked up he's got the totem if he needs it he's heading off first thing loses the tele loses the totem straight away though thing is, when you're fighting Galena and you know that totem isn't up, she basically doesn't have anything for mobility. You know, she hasn't got it to put down for health or burst. Her passive isn't about moving either. Oh, missing the rail by a hair's length. This is definitely looking a lot better for Syndrome. We did see Pavel take those initial champions out super fast. It hasn't happened this time. Here comes the totem though, so it's going to change. Get, catching the teleporter. There it is. Getting nice and buffed up just a little bit. There's the lightning gun, forces him to change his target, but four health left, he is so weak. Oh no. What is going on? Well, I'm inclined to think we might have had some kind of a connection issue here. So we'll sort of just sit tight and find out exactly what's happened. Bit of a shame really, down to this final round. But I'm inclined to think that Pavel has just disconnected, now, I think. Unfortunately, that is a really unfortunate time to, do, to disconnect because that was two rounds apiece and it was very much back and forth. Like, it was hard to tell where that one was going, obviously. Currently, we know that Syndrome has the map, so we'll find out what the ruling is going to be on the, on that in just a second. Um, what we have seen before, like, I assume it could be a few things. Um, for example, it, it could just be that Syndrome is given the map, or, more realistically, perhaps it will be that they will just remake the lobby and, and play the, 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 last, the first round of that map as if it was the last round, because ultimately it's down to one round apiece. If uh, Syndrome wins, he will obviously move on and, and win the series and advance through. And if Pavel wins, they'll go down. That would to be line. what quite possibly I think the most unfortunate time to actually disconnect. I right mean, in that last that, moment. That really is something that is just really hard to see, you know, because if I'm not sure what the ruling is, and we will find out, we'll find out. as soon as possible. But if the ruling is that Syndrome is just awarded the match, because obviously it wasn't his hardware that disconnected. I mean, this is their last chance to qualify. I, I, I hope we see them be able to just remake the lobby and just play the last round, because only like you guys, and obviously least of all like Pavel, they're going to want to be able to play that out and uh, you know find out who's going to be qualifying to Sunday the true way, the proper way. But ultimately, rules are rules, and we're going to have to see how what the ruling is going to be very soon. So, the change to Blood Run was clearly beneficial for Pavel. He, the Galena pick, I think Galena was... I actually think that it's the Galena pick infinitely more than the state, uh, than the map. I think it really is down to the champion way more than the map at this stage. He just looks next level comfortable with Galena. Right, so just to give you guys an update on the situation, we will be restarting the map and the score is going to be 2-2. Now, the map itself might not have a 2-2 score, but the round that we are about to watch is going to be, whatever happens, the final round because it was 2-2 before the disconnect occurred they're going to go straight back into the map they're just going to run it back and we're going to just pretend that it is 2-2 already that is what we were hoping the ruling was going to be um, i mean it, 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 it's we, we want to decide who makes out, it right, right? it's, yeah, it's decide who makes it so this is the one to see who's going to be making sunday uh, out of the two of them and these are two players that we've seen before and we know they are good and to get to this point obviously that that much is obvious but we want to see this played out even though connection issues aside hardware issues aside you want to see it, and I'm really happy that we actually are going to be able to finish this off. So, how do you see it going? Based on what we saw... I think it depends whether Galena survives or not. You think if Galena gets taken out early, Syndrome will move on? I think if Pavel can get at least one frag with Galena, it has the scope to be much closer. Because we've seen the potential of, of how Pavel can get going. He made three straight champions out with Galena, just Galena. Which is something you don't really see when he had Nyx and Rachel. Well, he wasn't player. quite as able to do it without Galena. So Galena if, if he loses Galena quickly, I'm inclined to think Syndrome's going to take this. But if he keeps Galena, then it becomes a little bit harder to call. Cool, Which I think, I think is ultimately going to make this quite stressful for him to play, right? When you think about it. Because ultimately, Galena seems to be like a star champion right now. And we're going to be playing the one round. This is going to be, you know, when we get the lobby remade and we go back into things, it's going to just be the first round wins. 
because if we get the first round and it's Syndrome, he advances, gets the first round and it's Pavel, we you know, go back to the lobby and make the next map. But there's going to be a lot of weight put on this first champion, because Pavel clearly is not as comfortable on other champions as he is Galena, at least on this map for sure. So if he loses Galena early, and he he knows he's got to hold on to Galena, this whole time now, between now and setting it up and getting it ready to go, he's going to know he has to hold on to that champion, which is going to be quite stressful, I think. So we saw one of the two, Slash and uh, Galena, at the very beginning. But to be honest, I I'm really happy to see that we are... Seeing so much variety in Duel as a game mode. You know, there was a point where Clutch was never picked. Slash was just never, never picked. But as time has progressed, and I know Clutch got those pretty big buffs, but we're at a point in Duel right now where I think every champion is picked for their own reasons. There is there is no specific champion in the game that is just straight up not worth picking. I think that makes me really happy because I'm all for variety. Of course, and I hope that continues to be a thing during the regionals. Obviously, there's going to be a little bit of a break between now and uh, after That's this That's a bit Sunday. more time for strategies to develop, I think. I, I, I expect the game to change a little bit in between um, now and the uh, the regionals. Obviously, we're going to be going to our playoffs on Sunday, where I assume it would be more of the same that we see today. But in the two weeks, obviously, there's going to be loads of community tournaments going on. I, I assume 125 FPS. Well, 125 FPS. Cooler obviously, shouts to 125 FPS. Shouts to the Cooler Cup. We know they, they're still continuing. They will continue. So the players will still have some experience in between now and the actual regionals themselves but you never know when it's already been four weeks in two weeks time we go for the regionals so it's going to basically be there's going to be that that clean 50 percent extra time between now and then for things to develop and sort of uh i suppose emerge in terms of how, how the players are sort of taking to the game well players are already starting to innovate i think and uh, in a game like quake Champions, I feel like the really experienced players that have really strong fundamentals with Quake as a franchise, I feel like they can take a game like Champions and really innovate the way Champions are picked and played. And we're already starting to see that. Even week number one, you know, Cypher in particular, he was going for some really obscure team compositions that a lot of people just weren't really picking. You kind of look at it at first glance and go like, why is he picking these Champions? You almost think it's just a personal pick, but... He's onto, he, was, he was onto something, do you know what I mean? And as time is progressing, we're seeing these champions picked for individual maps and individual nuances, like time and time again. At the end of the day, someone has to innovate. You know, ultimately, anything that is seen as meta-changing, meta meta-shifting, anything like that, someone has to think about at some point. And at some point, when it wasn't meta and then became meta, when it wasn't meta and someone used it first, it was seen as unorthodox. It was seen as a random pick. It was seen as a wild card. You know what I'm getting at, right? Well, the second uh, the second clutch receives his changes, the really the premier, and still to this day, but the premier clutch was immediately agent. Like agent took clutch and just ran away with it straight away. Like even though clutch was only a week old at that stage, a lot of the people weren't really diving too hard into that yet. But agent on the flip side just played nothing but clutch in his team and dived straight into the tournament and almost and innovated out. almost innovated the style of clutch that we see today the sheer aggression the the certain counters it brings to the table and now you know sort of case in point what we've seen today we see it quite quite commonly now especially paired up with other champions like nyx seems to be a deadly pair on most maps and it's really sort of you know brought it to the front line of competitive quake champions and you know someone had to do that first at some point and then we saw that amazing gameplay from a uh, toxic on runes of sarnath with a slash and it's like well of course it took it, it, it in some ways it took you know one of if not the greatest quake four player of all time to make slash work on a competitive level like it's to the surprise of no one really that someone of his caliber with his success in quake four was able to take a quake four champion and make that work as well but i think it's just it's almost like why the champions are the way they are for these experienced veterans of all these different Three, games to take the two, champions that one, fit their premier one, game of choice one, one, and they can really take that. So we're going for a straight up rematch. Right, guys, to give some of you guys the lowdown, this is the final round of this map. Unfortunately, Pavel did disconnect, which means that it was 2-2 before the disconnect occurred. They've gone for a straight up rematch. The question's going to be, who can survive? If Pavel loses Galena, it's going to be much harder. Galena has been his breakout champion of this map without a shadow of a doubt. And Syndrome, all three of his look good, but Pavel's Galena has really been the, the hero. Is, and he is quite low. Managed to top himself up on health armor. Going through again. You've seen how quickly that health can disappear in certain situations. He's actually got Pavel sort of backed into a corner right now. He's going to be able to pick up the mega health which is going to be crucial in just out-surviving this Galena that has just had amazing sustain with these totems. Now, 
because this is the last round. Hang on a minute. He's caught him off guard. Pavel just comes flying around the corner. Now, we talked about this. If Pavel gets a good start with Galena, it's going to be hard to stop him. The round before the disconnect, he made three straight champions just like they were nothing with just Galena. Narrowly missing that rail. That would have been disastrous for Syndrome. Pavel, is it going to miss it, though? He's going to start to top himself up. You can see, yeah, already got himself back up to full again. Galena has got that benefit of not needing a, a health pickup to heal herself. She can just put the totem down, which helps her out massively. Coming up slightly behind Pavel, but I think he's heard him. That's that preemptive LG, and here comes the offensive invisibility. Caught Pavel off guard, who didn't see him, but the rockets come through anyway. What a retaliation. I think that was very much an all or nothing play I from Syndrome I see there. Uh, two totems by that teleporter. Syndrome had better not go anywhere near that teleporter. He's still fighting. Oh, oh that hurt himself. Oh, that's the third. Totem. That's the third. Now, Syndrome, he's in. Yeah, that's why he had to get rid of him. If he used that teleporter, he would have been just dead. Oh, this is going to be so difficult for Syndrome now. Very low on health and has to get three champions in a row just to make a basic comeback here. We've seen him do it before, but I mean, literally forced to do it again now. We'll be going into game three. Pavel is on the verge of tying this up 1-1. It's been, ah, hang on, he's caught him and that's going to be it. Pavel with that three straight rounds because he kept that Galena. What a turnaround and what an answer as well. Indeed, he just, just absolutely played out of his mind, you know, completely and utterly. And it all comes down to that Galena pick. Now, there's no way, I think it's very unlikely that we're going to be seeing uh, Syndrome give him that map again. But ultimately, do you think we're going to be seeing him stick with the Galena? That just seemed to be the, the game changer. Well, when you factor in the potential maps that we're going to see, Ruins of Sarnath really does actually benefit Galena too because we've seen her picked very often on that map and Corrupted Keep. The three maps that we have are all maps that Galena is quite effective on. So if Galena, which it clearly was, was a humongous factor in that map, I think it's unlikely that we're going to see him go away from Galena in the next map. But no matter what map we have selected, Galena will still make sense. I mean, do we see Syndrome opt to just go back to Blood Covenant, considering Glenn doesn't seem to be quite as decisive on that map, but perhaps. Well, we are moments away from finding out, but had fun with the Quake World Championships qualifiers. Need a lot more Quake time to compete at a higher level. Thanks, Quake, ESL Quake, for the Quake World Championship. Well, thank you very much for uh, playing, dude, and thank you very much for the tweet. And we'll see you next time, by all means. But this is this is the crazy thing, that we're, we're so far into this World Championship already, and it's just shot by. Indeed. And as like I said, it hasn't felt like four weeks. Like, we, we are a month into the Quake World Championship. A month? When you a put month. that into perspective, it feels like we were just here. A week ago, we were here introducing everything and watching the crazy games between, like, Faz, Cypher, Agent, and a lot of those guys are already qualified in week number one, and we haven't seen them for three weeks. And in a month's time from now, we're going to see these players at the Quake World Championships in America. <laughs> it's just it's when you put it, When you fast. put it into perspective like that, it really sort of shows itself, you know what I mean? Like it really just sort of comes out of nowhere. How much can happen in the space of two months, I think? I mean, a million dollars. Think of the amount of money. One of, the, one of these guys that is currently just sitting at home, playing Quake from home, he's just putting them skills to good use on Quake Champions, which didn't cost them a penny to play. They're sitting currently, in a month's time, they're going to be winning a life-changing sum of money in a month's time. It's, it's a good time for Quake to have that, because many of these players, even to this day, even before Quake Champions were playing Quake Live, and they were taking part in the 125 FPS Cups, and they were playing almost every single week without fail. They've been with this game for, in some ways, longer than some of us have been alive. Like, put that into perspective, where it's such a long-running... I know, right? It's been such a long-running game. And here we are, when you fast-forward a few years, and now they're playing the same game, made by the same people, played by the same players, and they're playing for one million now. We're going into our final map. It's going to be Ruins of Sarnath, but... Oh, Pavel has taken the Galena away. Interesting to see how this is going to go now. Must have just thought that Galena was particularly useful on Blood Run. But here we go. They both have an LG, so it's going to be who gets the trail a little bit better. Now, this is going to be a bit of a momentum thing. Syndrome was riding a lot of momentum early on in this series, and 
Unfortunately, you know, losing that map there, the disconnect sort of, you know, slowing things down as well. It's going to have to bring himself back to what he was doing so well at the start. But whether he can do that or not, it's another thing, because Pablo is going to be riding a lot of confidence going into this next map. I mean, this is going to be the final one guaranteed. You know, whoever wins this Ruins of Sinath is going to be moving on to Sunday's playoffs. This is no doubt an important map for both of these players. Same with elimination format too, so the pressure really is on. But there is a real air of cautiousness in this map, and I think we're going to be seeing this a lot. Runes of Sunath is quite a defensive map as well, but speaking of which, 100 damage outright, and he's still at a bad point, but misses the rail! That was, oh, at the last minute. He can't be, unfortunately, he cannot be missing rails like that in this setting. Syndrome has him low, but I don't think quite realizes just how low. Heavy armor is going to keep him nice and alive. A few pickups here and there. There we go. Now he's fully stacked again. This is what Pavel needs. Would have heard the mega health there. Undoes a lot of the damage, though, with that 80 damage rail. <sighs> Last minute. Be so careful. Syndrome really not trying to stand still for too long, taking those rails. Move as quickly as possible. Take the rails when you can get them, but hang on a minute. <sighs> 14 health. That was before the Ghost Walk, too. If he had any less health, he would have oh, gone down. Oh, he might die here. Oh, no, he misses the rocket, but not the follow-up. Syndrome is going to take that one down for sure. And then we go Syndrome with that first blood of the game. Two minutes in. Right as the Ranger spawns, Mega Health does go in favor of Syndrome. Now he's got a good trail. That's a guaranteed frag. Really nothing Pavel could do about that one. He's down to his visor, the final champion of this round. We'll see if he can do it, but... Yeah, his visor, that's uh -oh. anarchy, though. Oh, wow. What a shot. Syndrome, that's the kind of stuff we saw from him in round one of uh, map one. And that's what we need to see him continue with. It's Anarchy on Ruins of Sarnath. It's a map that we've seen time and time again. This champion is dangerous. The mobility, the speed, the fact that he's hard to hit. It's actually not surprising at all to see Syndrome pick this map, considering he just seems so confident with Anarchy particularly. And like you just said, this is such a strong map for this champion for many different reasons. And Syndrome kind of showing us why at the moment. There's that rail. Even with the LG, I mean, he can get some guaranteed damage in between the rail shots if they fail to connect, but... Oh, man, did you see the speed? This is how fast I think he can get himself around. Oh, catches Pavel. Does he have Ghost Walk up, though? Going in for the kill, and no! Wow. He doesn't, even if he had it, he didn't have the chance. But that's the thing about Nyx, though. If you have Ghost Walk, you need... I mean, obviously, it, it might have been down there in that situation, but even if you have it up, you need to be quick with the reactions to activate it. Because just like that Syndrome with that quick rocket into rail straight away, just deletion out of nowhere. Really popular point for Anarchy to kind of sit near the gate towards armor. Oh, wow. Trying to bomb and weave to avoid these rails. See him go up. Oh, rocket's coming through. Make your health not for another 10 seconds or so. Heavy armor, though. Syndrome was the one that collected it last time, so he's going to know it's up. Anarchy with that heavy armor just becomes so much more dangerous with the amount of damage he's now able to tank. Make that a mega health, too. Now, this is an Anarchy that's going to be difficult to kill. Almost in a good situation to get some life down there. Ooh, missing that quick snap to rail. Looking to come up behind. Wonder if Pavel's actually ready for this. Hasn't caught sight of him just yet. Here he comes near the LG, meets him head on, but minimal damage on the way towards that heavy armor, only taking 48. I think, I think it really is just Syndrome trying to stop him from getting any of these big pickups. Oh no, misses the jump. Well, he heard the teleporter. He definitely would have heard that teleporter. Nice quick rocket jump just to make sure he can secure the mega health before Pavel got there too. I thought maybe he was going to have to concede it after missing that quick jump to get around, but apparently not. But at this stage, it goes back to well, it goes back to the classic, really, that Anarchy with this amount of a lead. Well, Lucky just lost all of that armor straight away thanks to one rocket. That really is the danger. You have to make sure that your duking is on point when you're playing someone like Anarchy, especially when Pavel's being so accurate as he is. But he can afford to be defensive here because we're, I know we've just gone halfway through, but he's not really overextending himself because there's no reason to. But because of that, Pavel really hasn't been able to get anything going. If Syndrome's able to just play defensive for another two and a half minutes, he's going to be on match point up. 
but realistically, I mean, two and a half minutes might not sound like a long time, but in Quake sort of terms, that is quite a while to sort of hang around, considering how fast these rounds can go back and forth. Well, do, you re do we realistically see think he's going to be around for two minutes just trying to avoid fighting? I think if he sees a fight he can win, he'll take it, but I don't think he's going to be interested overextending in the slightest amount. he does still amount. have his um, injection too. Combat takes a matter of seconds in this game. You eat one rocket into one rail when you're dead. That can be two seconds, even less sometimes. But if you avoid that situation, a trading shot for shot right now. Pavel looking to take this fight. Oh, he wasn't the air. That was going to be a guaranteed kill, but Syndrome wasn't able to get it. Oh, I just heard that rail fail to connect. You didn't even need to see it. You heard how close that rail was. Still, though, that that's, I don't want to say a sign of weakness, but Syndrome had a practically guaranteed frag there, but chose not to go for it. I mean, that's a bit of a sign of Syndrome perhaps starting to second guess himself. Well, if he pushed a little bit too heavily and messed it up, he would have risked going down. I suppose so. 20 seconds away from the one minute warning. Even though we just saw a fight there, he's still alive and now he's completely healthy. Oh, and you can see that he's just jumped down too. He's going to have a little bit of time. I actually think he is just trying to run away for this last few minutes. Well, Pavel has the dire already, but I wonder how efficiently he really is going to be able to chase Anarchy. Oh, oh he has behind. it. There's the injection. Yeah, he, he is just running away the whole round. He has no interest in fighting at all. Yeah, He's and he just clock. conceded the mega health too, Syndrome. This, now, this is where it gets a bit dangerous. When, when you start playing to not die instead of playing to win, you kind of give up these power-ups. You sort of give up that, that, that control over the map when all you're trying to do is just run away, all, all, all of a sudden, Pavel now has heavy armor, and he's got mega health just like that. And Syndrome, if he can survive for 30 seconds, he'll be fine. But if he dies now, and then he has to sort of, is forced to fight Pavel when it's 2v2, well, he's just going to be low on health and armor. In 10 seconds, he's going to have the injection. But if Pavel can find him before that, if he catches him in a point blank situation, he has more than enough health. Almost at that rocket as well. That could have been disastrous, but he was able to miss. Pavel going to struggle to keep up with him. Now he has the injection. He's right behind He's him. We can him. see. He's right there. Oh, he misses the rail. Catches him in the air with the LG. Can he chase it down? He goes in for the injection. Can he survive? Gets a 100 damage rocket, but still alive. Oh! And the reason Pavel was able to survive that is because he was fully stacked on health and armor. Because Syndrome was playing that defensive nature to try and just sit back and play the clock, he wasn't controlling the power-ups, which let Pavel get them for free, which ultimately gave him the health to secure that frag. You saw how much damage those rockets were doing. That was 80 damage. That was 100 damage. Any other kind of opponent would have got deleted by those rockets because his aiming was on point. Pavel just had way too much health. And that's why you said he just sort of gave up those pickups. And we understand why. He was playing the defensive game. He wasn't going to put himself in a situation where if they fight for mega health or they fight for heavy armor, Anarchy risks getting caught off guard. He didn't want to be in that situation. I However, like, I feel like Syndrome almost panicked, though, going to that jump pad when Pavel was actively chasing him, though, because you saw Pavel hit so much damage to just keep him in the air. However, as I can say, Syndrome getting a lot of damage and can Syndrome get the kill? He misses the die orb. That would have been it. Never mind. That was a clutch rail. I mean, that's one of those situations where don't quite realize at the time the difference it was going to make, but now we find ourselves with two rounds each player left to go. As opposed to, if Syndrome got that, we would be on one round left for him for three rounds straight. I think just for the sake of Pavel not being as stressed out and pressured in the rest of this match, it was crucial for him to take that round, especially after how it went down, when Syndrome was really trying to run the clock and Pavel found him at the last possible second. That was phenomenal play from Pavel. This could be the most pivotal round of his entire Quake champion's career. If he wins this game, that was what started it. That was what started all of it. Can he ride that momentum? That is the question. Still very weak, though. Only 25 health and armor to go. By the way, it's disgusting how the blood stays. It just paints the whole map. It's awesome. Hey, man, it tells a story. Let's see oh, what happens. Oh, oh I mean, before we even got to finish that conversation, the anarchy just died. Oh, there's the ghost walk because he got a good spawn. The good spawn there was that Syndrome was forced to use Ghost Walk immediately. And now he hasn't got it for this next fight. Here comes Pavel. Oh, wait! He just got styled on from top down. How many times are we gonna see people do that today when they are seemingly guaranteed dead, just quickly swap over to a rail and just nuke out of nowhere? God, this is so back and forth. It's he almost like that. both players are playing for a shot at Sunday's playoffs and they know it. He got that good spawn. He forced the Ghost Walk, he caught him off guard, got a 100 damage rocket as well. And still wasn't a safe lead, just like that. I mean, that's the danger. Oh, I tried to take a guaranteed rail, but no, follows through. I think that was a mistake. Yeah, but he, he followed through with the rail too and kept it out. I think Syndrome may be thinking a little bit too uh, far ahead there. 
Oh, the gauntlet is out. No, he's... Oh, no. Wow, I actually hesitated. Powell's going to take that round. Syndrome, unfortunately, got the gauntlet out. I'm not quite sure if Syndrome is kind of using the... bringing the, the right tool to the situation at the moment. Well, either way, just like that, Pavel, this has been a turnaround. I was willing to say Syndrome was going to take this one. I mean, round one was very dominant. And round and two? There's no getting around it. Syndrome was looking in complete control at the start, but Pavel, he's just got the snowball rolling, and he is just keeping it going. Well, uh, this is... This is the case. This is that fourth week, 100 damage on Anarchy. He does not want to take that damage. Here comes Pavel with the aggressive invisibility. Gets a rocket, but it's not enough yet. Going in for the damage. Can he finish it with the... Doesn't quite get enough damage. Wait a minute. He stayed there. He walked back into the missile and died immediately. Syndrome's going to be kicking himself for that one as Pavel has already got... Oh, no! Wow. And from bad to worse, Syndrome is down to just the Ranger by himself. A direct rocket deleting Nyx immediately. This could not have gone worse. This round could not have gone any worse for poor Syndrome. I mean, that was the that was the turning point. There's, there's losing your first champion like that, and then there's just your second one walking into a direct rocket. That was unfortunate, and Syndrome is left between this 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 final comeback oh, oh another. another hundred oh my he is that was just uh -oh. such a well-placed rocket was chasing him it's... he's still around he is in the way oh it's not gonna be enough he tried to use the dire orb to juke for that split second but even when he came out of the dire orb he couldn't see him pavel i mean that is one of the most impressive turnarounds of this entire tournament i think that's definitely a fair thing to say syndrome i mean he had it so close for so many different times in that series, but Pavel was just able to hold his nerve. I think that's the biggest thing it came down to was just keeping your composure. Because as that one progressively got worse and worse for Syndrome, you could see more mistakes were being made to the point that, you know, Syndrome just didn't seem to be quite as in control of what he was doing at the time. As the pressure seemed to get added on, he was making a lot more mistakes. Whereas on the flip side, Pavel, even though the odds were against him for a lot of that series, was able to keep his nerve together, which ultimately led him make those ridiculously impressive comebacks round after round it seemed after uh, round. it seemed a little bit autopilot by the end where as the pressure started to ramp up and we had this conversation and it will never stop being important is that this is the final chance for these guys to qualify so when you're in a situation where right i have to win this one round otherwise i'm out of the tournament for good then it can really start to have some unexpected side effects on the way that you start to think and the way that you make decisions. And at the end, I kind of feel like his decisions to... Uh, he would spawn and then go for quite an obvious pickup that Pavel was just waiting for. And both times, actually, the lightning gun, where he would spawn and go, right, I'm just going to take a lightning gun. And Pavel was just lying in wait. In that final round, after the amazing comeback Pavel made, I mean, I, I, part of me really feels like after that comeback on Ruins of Sana, where... I mean, he was seconds away from being match point down 2-0. But he got the final kill at the last possible second. And then in overtime, managed to come off the scramble better. I think from that point on, it kind of seemed like Syndrome may have just been a bit mentally checked out. Pavel was riding too much momentum. And at the same time, Syndrome was... Uh, that must have been a, a hard pill to swallow. Indeed. That final frag. But, you know, even, even on this map, we thought Galena was going to be kind of like the deciding factor for, pa for Pavel. But even on Ruins, where he opted to not go for Galena anymore, still looking in complete control of what he was doing. And that's what we needed. You know, that's what we were looking for. Pavel, um, in a situation, I mean, that was so close. That was such a... I mean, even right this here, was th that combo. Th this was match point. That was match point for Syndrome in that situation. If he was able to take that round, he would have won. And once again, he looked so close to doing it on Ruins too, but just, oh, well, he wasn't able to do it, even though the first round was so convincing. We just caught him off guard so many times. But Pavel's rocket placement, th that was the real one. And this moment here where Syndrome actually decided to turn round, right here, he fires a rocket. And right as he does that, Syndrome decides to double back. He decides to turn around. That really was the deciding factor. And another one, that 100 damage straight on a Nyx, fresh it's out of spawn. It's because Syndrome spawned and wanted to go straight for the rail. And you know, we saw Pavel make the read that that's what he was doing. Direct rocket on a freshly spawned Nyx isn't going to take that rocket. And that was enough. And Pavel will be seeing again on Sunday. So we have one more set to find out who else is going to meet the rest of the competition on Sunday. It's going to be Zoot versus Kirtle. So that's going to be a really good match. I'm looking forward to seeing that one. And while we get things up and running, we are once again going to go for a quick break. So don't go anywhere. Quake World Championships will be right back.